Well, welcome back. Uh, today we have our very distinguished guest, uh, independent scientist Loren Murray, a radiation expert from Berkeley, California, who will be uh, bringing us a latest update on Fukushima, including radiation warnings increasing and China banning U.S. Pacific coastline food. Welcome, Loren. Thank you, Alfred. Good. Uh, so tell us, uh, what, what have you been seeing both in the Bay Area, in Hawaii, in, in, in the Pacific Basin, with regard to Fukushima? Well, it's uh, it's not very good news. Oh. Uh, but since um, about September, maybe the middle of September, until the present, and it's just uh, another week and a half before Christmas of 2013 here in the San Francisco Bay Area where I live, uh, the radiation levels have been increasing uh, and fluctuating higher than they've ever been before and then settling down again. Uh, starting around the time uh, of the America's Cup race uh, between New Zealand and Oracle's uh, boat yacht uh, owned by Larry Ellison, who's the CEO of the America's Cup, and what was very obvious is that we could tell by the weather changes every 24 hours during each day and night that uh, cold, dense air from Japan was being piped in to the San Francisco Bay Area to be able to manipulate the weather the next day so that Larry Ellison's uh, yacht and team could, in fact, uh, retain the cup and not lose it to New Zealand. And that's when the radiation levels started going up. Now, in Berkeley, uh, prior to March 11th, 2011, which was the date of the Fukushima tsunami and earthquake disaster, which turned into more than 300 Chernobyls by April of 2011, um, the radiation levels before that global nuclear disaster uh, were in the Bay Area between 0 0.07 to about 0 0.13 becquerels, or that's a disintegration per second. Uh, in terms of counts per minute, that is 60 counts per minute because there are 60 seconds in a minute and a becquerel is one disintegration per second. So um, I noticed uh, starting in September during the America's Cup race that the Geiger counter readings um, were going as high as 0 0.32. Uh, and a little more, a little higher than that. I've never read anything in Berkeley that high, so um, I'm I'm not very happy about it. That's for sure. Um, but the radiation levels after Fu Fukushima, and that's prior to the America's Cup race in September of 2013. So for two years after Fukushima, the radiation levels were fluctuating at um, about 0 0.23 uh, becquerels to about 0 0.27. By September of 2013, uh, the levels had risen to like 0 0.28, 0 0.29, to 0.32. Uh, so it's definitely increasing and it should be because of the new releases that are happening in Japan. They're manipulating, uh, they're fooling around with these, I, I call them radioactive pickup sticks, nuclear pickup sticks. Right. But they're, 
the fuel rods in the um, the uh, very 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 badly damaged reactor buildings. There are four of them, six of them, I think. Sorry, uh, at the uh, the Daiichi plant, uh, which is uh, one of about fifty five in Japan. So the um, the readings are increasing here now. Another very, very serious issue is the tsunami debris field, which is the size of the state of Texas. And that is uh, all of the, the houses, the trucks, the buses, the cars, the boats, the fishing lines, uh, school playground equipment, you name it, it's in that debris field that has been slowly crossing the, the Pacific Ocean uh, for two and a half years. Um, so, um, it's washing up on our shores now, and that is why China announced this week that they would no longer accept any food products from the west coast of North America, and that's including Alaska, Canada and the US and it should have been expend, extended to Mexico because the uh, the Mexican coastline and the Sea of Cortez which is between Baja California and the mainland of Mexico um, that extends up into California but it's a very long narrow peninsula down in Mexico um, that has had uh, radioactive fish, there has been conjoined twinning, which is a, uh, a result of radiation exposure in the uterus to animals and to humans, and it also ha is happening in plants. So um, we have um, um, a, a lot of symptoms. We have a lot of confirmation and affirmation that this has been a very, very, very devastating, extremely dangerous, and it's really threatening the entire biosphere of this planet with every living thing included in what I call a deliberately planned, executed, and strategically carried out uh, nuclear war against humanity. There's absolutely no other way to explain it. It's not an accident. And I've um, made a list of the foreshadowing events since the 50s that support uh, my contention that this is a man-made disaster. Right. Now, well... We'll get to that list, but let me ask you uh, just a few things. Go, going back to the beginning, uh, we we saw a a report that just uh, was published uh, recently, de December thirteenth, two thousand and thirteen, and this is from National Geographic data, and it quote ninety eight percent of the Pacific seafloor is covered in dead creatures, one hundred and forty five miles from California, and they state that only a few months earlier in March, the same study found less than 1% of the seafloor covered with detritus. Uh, could you comment on that? Sure. What they're talking about, because I read that report very carefully, um, what they're talking about is microorganisms that are in the upper layer of seawater from the surface of the ocean down about maybe a thousand feet. And this is uh, plankton and, and um, uh, microscopic organisms that are at the bottom of the food chain. Now, nobody has identified the cause, although I think reasonably we can suspect that it's the Fukushima radiation that has been uh, washing out by continual rain as that uh, those air masses move across the Pacific Ocean almost directly east to west unless they go up to Alaska and then come down the, 
the west coast of North America. But um, that that's the that's the rain out of these very tiny microscopic nanoparticles of radiation that are being released into the atmosphere. Now there are more. Uh, more radiation is being released uh, through contaminated groundwater and whatever they're hiding from us at the um, the Daiichi nuclear power plant, um, Fu Fukushima Daiichi, and um, there is there are certainly much. Uh, more detailed, very carefully measured levels of radiation in a number of surveys that were made. One was made in 2011 up around Alaska and uh, it, it was NOAA, I believe, the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. Um, I think that they were the U.S. agency that went to Alaska and sampled um, clams, filter feeders, fish, uh, octopus, uh, octopi, and also they took a lot of samples from um, seaweed and uh, the, the, uh, the green um, algae and things like that. And it was pretty alarming because that was just within, I think, even less than a month of Fukushima happening. This is two and a half years later with 24 hour a day, 365 days a year continuing releases. And what has caused this increase in the radiation levels, I believe since September, uh, I believe they have been manipulating and fooling around at the Fukushima plant with the fuel rods. And I also believe that uh, within 24 hours of the tsunami and the earthquake and then the tsunami that followed an hour later, I believe that uh, the buildings were so damaged and are still so damaged that I think the fuel pools were empty. I don't think there was any water in them because there was no electricity to that plant for days and days and days. And I knew uh, after the earthquake, it was it was in the evening. I knew that within three hours, the reactors would be in meltdown, and um, there was no electricity for days. So all of them had to melt down that were operational. I think one or two of them had the fuel taken out of them. They were refueling it, so they take the old fuel out and stored in pools and then they put new fuel rods in. But uh, what TEPCO has said from the beginning is mostly all lies and um, the foreshadowing events, the studies that were done, experiments, the dry run if you want to set up the Fukushima disaster occurred in the US and in England. It was a joint venture between British Petroleum, which is owned completely by the Queen of England, that's her own personal wealth, and um, uh, British Petroleum and the Department of Energy. So the University of California was responsible for this disaster. They were carrying it out under orders from Queen Elizabeth. It was all set up by the British and by the American financiers those greedy bankers that are behind every kind of false flag and war uh, because that's how they make money. So when you begin to follow the money, you begin to see the hidden agenda and the culprits. Right, right. Uh, uh, just to touch on a couple of things and then we can go into the foreshadowing events so we can see how this was, how, how this was set up. Um, just in the past few days, uh, RT, Russian television, reported that record outdoor radiation level, quote, that can kill in 20 minutes was detected at Fukushima. And uh, today, following up on that, uh, Asahi Shimbun reported 
record radiation levels detected in the well, you were just talking about groundwaters, at the Fukushima nuke plant, a record 1.8 million becquerels of beta ray sources per liter of water were detected at a monitoring well at, at, at Fukushima number one. Uh, what are your comments on, on that? Well, um, it's sort of a right comment, and I hope people laugh, but um, that's water you wouldn't have to heat to make coffee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but I mean, it, it's, it's, it, 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 is this a continuing part of the false flag, or they just set it in motion and now it's this doomsday machine? Uh, both. Uh, it's absolutely both. I, I know that um, we're, we're going to talk about the, um, the dose uh, surveys that have been going on. The U.S. government has been uh, monitoring the, the radiation levels, doing um, their, their official and unofficial government dose surveys. What's happened is that cattle mutilations have resumed. And we know from the 60s, when the cattle mutilation started in the United States, in the early 60s, which was when heavy bomb testing was going on, um, there were suddenly mutilations of cattle mostly, but also horses and, and other livestock, uh, reported all over the United States. Now, nobody can figure out Nobody could figure out what it was, what was doing that. They said it was ETs, extraterrestrials, and they blamed it on everything. But um, some of the, uh, the farmers whose animals had been slaughtered um, and parts of the odd, strange parts of the body were always missing from the dead, mutilated animal. Um, and a, a lot of them smelled like formaldehyde, but there were no uh, truck or car tracks. There was no indication of who it was or how they got there because there was no evidence, no forensic evidence that anyone had even been there um, by driving. Well, uh, a sheriff and some uh, country folk in one of the Midwestern states in a, a real small town, were at the local uh, airport, mostly used by private planes. And this big black helicopter was, was parked there with no uh, numbering or symbols or ID numbers or anything on it. So the sheriff went up because there had been local mutilations happening and reported, and he wanted to know who they were. It turned out they were U.S. Army. And it's been the U.S. Army in these big military helicopters unmarked. They've been doing the cattle mutilations all over the U.S. They always take the eyeballs because the eyeballs have the lowest intake or uptake of radionuclides in, of any part of the body. They always take certain organs. They always take the rectum. Uh, so that they're measuring the contamination as the uh, food waste exits the body. Um, they were um, taking samples in the lungs, some of the reproductive organs. Um, very, very strange way of sampling and always this formaldehyde smell. So one day I was talking to... Um, an, an anti-nuclear activist, this, an, this is one who was doing it in the 60s, and he and a friend uh, hitchhiked across the U.S., and they were visiting other anti-nuclear activists around the nation and going to their offices and talking to them and sharing information. And he said, I walked into this office, I think it was in Colorado, and he looked up on the wall and he saw this stick pin map on the wall with all these stick pins in it. And he said to the activists there, what is this map about? And they said, oh, this is a stick pin map of all the cattle mutilations that we've been able to, to cut, uh, track. And, um, and these are the stick pins for the nuclear facilities 
And if you look carefully at that map, all of the cattle mutilations are downstream from nuclear facilities. So that pretty much cinched that it was the U.S. government and probably the military in most cases that was doing the sampling. Those mutilations kind of slowed down and stopped for the most part in the 70s and 80s. But they're ramping up again. And uh, not only that, Cheney, uh, Vice President Dick Cheney, sent a, a, a French reporter named Ficino, who had no background in radiation. He didn't know anything about depleted uranium. So Cheney hired him and sent him to Iraq uh, after the Iraq War and had him take samples all over Iraq, soil samples and water samples and air samples, to determine what dose the Army, the U.S. military, had delivered to Iraq at that time. And then, of course, that is all massaged, all that data is massaged, and then Cheney and Bush would order more carpet bombing more mini nukes, more depleted uranium bunker busters, whatever missiles that uh, he wanted um, to use to increase the dose. Now what happens is they were deliberately permanently contaminating Iraq, also Afghanistan, also Lebanon, also Gaza, also many other countries and regions and um, that is permanent contamination which will uh, bring long lingering illnesses, uh, decrease, decreased viability in the children born in these contaminated regions, and just an overall decline in productivity. In fact, Chernobyl was deliberately engineered, executed, and carried out as a false flag, and a, an Indian admiral told me this, the father of the Indian submarine, Admiral Vishnu Bhagwat, he said, I inspected nuclear power plants all over the Soviet Union, and he said, there is absolutely no way that Chernobyl was an accident. He said, I've been in all those reactors, and he said, 12 levels of safety measures have to be dismantled in order, uh, in order to carry out an accident like Chernobyl. It was not an accident. And the reason they did it is, and the U.S. was involved, is to lower the productivity of the Soviet Union, bankrupt it, and then carry out the transformation of the Soviet Union to uh, a, um, I don't know if you want to call it democratic Russia, but under Putin it's certainly um, a different place to live. Now. Right. Well, well it, it also has... Uh, has has radiated Eastern Europe, France, I mean, uh, all of that area. Um, it's completely globally mixed in one year. This entire planet, every living thing on it, every place on every crack and corner and cranny on this planet is now contaminated from Fukushima. And every day the levels are accumulating, it's the cumulative effect, and um, for instance, for one of the plutonium uh, isotopes, uh, it will be radioactive at significant amounts for the next 100,000 years. Now, uh, let me read a, 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 a couple of statements and see what, how, how you would re react to them. Number one, that the U.S. government ordered Japan to remove the fuel rods at Fukushima, thereby exacerbating this disaster. Number two, that TEPCO is getting orders directly from BP through the Department of Energy, uh, i.e. that the U.S. has really been the prime mover of this global radiation genocide through Fukushima. Are those statements that 
you would agree with? or uh, I would agree with all of the statements, but I'd like to comment on okay. the last two comments that you yeah. made. Uh, number one is that this is Queen Elizabeth and British interests taking back the colonies and the former colonies. So the United States is a former colony of Britain and the British have never forgiven or forgotten the U.S. Uh, uh, revol re revolution which, um, which uh, allowed the uh, colony of, of the Americas to uh, break away from Britain and to become an independent country. Of course, um, uh, the um, General de Lafayette, uh, the a Marquess, uh, an aristocrat from France, is probably the only reason the U.S. won their independence. The French came, they were very, very well-trained soldiers and army, and um, certainly Lafayette was very clever in military affairs, and he gave inestimable help and assistance and support and uh, firepower to the U.S. Uh, of course, he was a professional soldier with a government-funded military, and in the Americas, in the colonies, it was the immigrants who had come over with mostly not very much money, but they were some of the best and the brightest from the countries they left. Uh, they were the strongest to be able to leave and come to a new country and set a whole new life up for their families. And um, so the, um, the French uh, really did help us to, to uh, break free. But um, I, I'm sorry, I forgot what your last two comments were. Well, well, yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is that is that uh, number one that the U.S. government ordered Japan to remove the fuel rods, i.e., this event happened, and then the fuel rods were removed. But it was the U.S. that ordered Japan to remove the fuel rods. Okay, and that. Yes, and that behind all of this, TEPCO is getting its orders from British Petroleum through the U.S. Department of Energy, i.e. behind everything, it's the British pulling the strings. It's always the British, and, and um, I just like to remind people, if they don't know why the sun never sets on the British Empire, the answer is, who would trust an Englishman in the dark? I think most countries and colonies and former colonies would laugh their heads off at that joke, but it's not such a joke. Um, the British uh, began setting up the Fukushima disaster in the 1950s. It may have even been in the 40s. Um, certainly Bertrand Russell who was uh, a well-known Englishman, but probably the most dangerous man in the 20th century, was, was lecturing at Oxford in the 30s, talking about the depopulation agenda that they had planned and, and the sterilization globally of 95% of the males and 60% of females. Um, it's an incredible statement, but... Um, it's in his book, his lectures were published in a book in the 50s called The Impact of Science on Society by Bertrand Russell. They were simply his lectures from Oxford in, in the 30s and he said right in the book, in that lecture that he gave in the 1930s, that that's what the plan was. So he was always a part of the world order, new world order. He has always been a part of Dope Incorporated, the global drug economy, which is behind a lot of the wars, Vietnam, World War II, um, many of the wars that we're fighting uh, are about uh, supplying drugs to the this illegal economy that's, that's five times bigger than the, the legitimate global economy. So there are huge amounts of money involved. Um, and basically, it's uh, a death culture. They are not Christian. They're not real Jews. They are uh, Satanists, and they they worship Isis, 
the death cult of ancient Egypt. Um, it's a bizarre, it's a bizarre agenda. It's an unbelievably, horrifically cruel and unprecedented and illogical agenda. But these people have been inbred for so many centuries to keep the money in their families that basically they're clinically insane. They're narcissistic, they are psychopaths and sociopaths, and they do the same thing to their own people. Let's let's start now with, with the foreshadowing of 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 Fukushima uh, starting in, in nineteen fifty four with yep. uh, wind scale Sellafield and and going through all of the steps how this global genocide was set up. Well, um, in what some people would call the pro-nukers, the miracle of the atomic age, the development of nuclear technologies began in earnest and well-funded in World War II when the U.S. Uh, England, uh, Canada was also involved in other countries in developing a nuclear weapons uh, capability. The Manhattan Project was the, um, the, the name of the project in the United States carried out by the U.S. government. Um, the, um, these, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble remembering um, well we, 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 IE in, in 1954 oh, there, right. there, there was a UK study to set up F Fukushima oh, through right. Sellafield in, in yes. the Irish Sea yes so what happened is England wanted a nuclear weapons program too so they set up two Magnoc, Magnavox uh, um, reactors on in Cumbria, which is just a little bit north of Wales, on the Irish Sea coast, on the Irish Sea, uh, opposite Ireland, and they began uh, producing. Uh, they were they were making plutonium for their nuclear weapons program, but. Um, it seemed like they were making an awful lot and they were deliberately dumping it into the Irish Sea. This is for decades, they're still doing it. And I wrote uh, an article, uh, Global Implications of Sellafield, in about um, 2006, I think. And I ended up getting my face slashed uh, for writing that because I exposed Windscale was the name of that facility until they had a horrific fire and accident. And so it was changed to Sellafield to um, shed the bad implications of uh, the name Windscale. And the British were producing all this, all these fission products and radiation and dumping them into the Irish Sea. Well, some of the organizations that um, do volunteer organizations in, in Scandinavia, Northern Europe, and other countries that monitor radiation spills and accidents around the world. They begin measuring and doing extensive sampling. Very expensive to do that, but they had a lot of money and support from the public. And um, then I wrote this paper and explained how uh, that dumping of wind scale Sellafield uh, fission products into the Irish Sea as well as the amounts released from nuclear bomb testing has caused the deaths of over 25 million babies in India because that radiation is carried at great depth in the ocean from the Irish Sea straight down the middle of the Atlantic and then it turns east and comes into the India, Indonesia, um, Southeast Asia um, region and it surfaces there, it splits. Half of it surfaces in India and of course that's 
carried in the air, in rain, it, it comes in the sea spray on all around the shoreline of India and it, it caused the deaths of 25 million Indian babies. Uh, the other half of that um, is called the Great Conveyor Belt. It controls all the weather on the planet. It travels at five miles an hour and the other half of it stays at depth in the Indonesia Southeast Asian area but it moves into the Pacific and loops around the um, the top of the, the northern part of the Pacific and surfaces there. Then it comes back down to the equatorial region and it goes through Southeast Asia and back up the Atlantic again. So it's just a big conveyor belt loop that moves water and heat uh, and other nutrients and so forth uh, around the oceans. So that is what the British were doing and they were of course studying the dose effects on India as well as the regions including the United States. So um, yes, the British are behind this. Now they have used British Petroleum because remember the Queen of England is a sovereign queen. She owns all of the mineral wealth, all of the mineral rights, all of the people and all of the land in the a Commonwealth, which is 27 countries and numerous territories and islands. And um, she gave President Obama, two years before he ran for president and won the first time, she gave him half a billion dollars for his election campaign. Foreign donations are illegal in the United States. She also gave the Lawrence Berkeley Laboratory where the Manhattan Project started and where Dr. Stephen Chu, who won the Nobel Prize at Stanford for solar and alternative energy, he was the director, suddenly appointed the director of the Lawrence Berkeley Lab where basically it's the home of the Manhattan Project more or less. Uh, he was made the director and then almost immediately received half a billion dollars from Queen Elizabeth uh, for um, to, to transform the Lawrence Berkeley Lab into an alternative energy uh, research lab, research park. They're privatizing it now and the university. So it's going to be her university, her state of California, her research park. And, uh, of course, the American people will pay for all of that. She just makes the down payment to get things going in the right direction. But then she shifts, uh, and the people behind her, the cost, the real cost, onto uh, governments because they can afford to pay for nuclear power, for wars, for the development of exotic weapons. Um, and that... Uh, the, the orders, the marching orders to TEPCO came from British Petroleum Headquarters in England and they went through Stephen Chu and Dr. Stephen Coonan who is the head of the Jason scientists, the successors to the Manhattan Project scientists. And Dr. Coonan, uh, a the theoretical nuclear physicist in his bio, that was posted on the Department of Energy website, it said in a separate paragraph after it described his theoretical work that he was an expert on oceans, environments, give me a break, oceans, environments. I think Stephen Coonan was the architect and the strategizer for Fukushima. And you would have to have someone with a theoretical mathematical background because you have to pencil things out in mathematics before you go on to implementing uh, whatever that project and concept and idea is. Right, right. So uh, here, here we go back to the 50s and then uh, to the Bikini oh, Atoll. Sorry? Yes. I, I just wanted to say that... Um, 
TEPCO is definitely taking their orders from BP. It's going through the Department of Energy, and the Japanese government has almost nothing to say. They're in a straitjacket since World War II. Uh, Japan is an American colony like the Philippines, I'm sorry to say. And I don't think that's a good idea, and I don't support that as an American. But the uh, the gangsters in tiaras and the gangsters in Wall Street and the city of London think it's a wonderful way to uh, loot and pillar the whole world. And yes, it was the U.S. government who ordered Japan, ordered TEPCO, ordered the Japanese government to remove those fuel rods. That is a guaranteed disaster coming our way, coming, going to contaminate the whole planet globally uh, before this is over and it's going to be far worse than what Fukushima has released already. So, so that the whole process of moving the fuel rods from inside to outside with the cranes collapsing in the daylight outside the reactors uh, looked like it was foolhardy but in fact it was part of the design sabotage to create this radiation event. Uh, the um, Obama is going to earn that money that Queen Elizabeth gave him, nothing's free with her, um, by liquidating the United States. And our president and his wife and his daughters left the United States and went to the Southern Hemisphere for two weeks uh, while Fukushima was happening. He doesn't give uh, a hoot about the American people, about his oath of office, about anything. He's just interested in doing what he's told to do and um, as efficiently as he possibly can. Well, now there there's sort of two two directions that 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 we can go here. We can continue with the completing with the Fukushima, with the foreshadowing of Fukushima, and then at some point in in the interview. I really would like to get to your assessment of, from a species point of view, an evolutionary point of view, how significant is this? Is this like the KT event for the dinosaurs? Is this just a blip in, in the evolutionary scheme of things? Uh, you know, where, where would this fit in, in your in your estimate, but we don't an have to answer that now. Would you like to go back to the to the scale of the foreshadowing countdown? Um, why don't you just continue on on either either path? I, it doesn't matter. Oh, to uh, me. Okay, good. Let's let's go be because I know that a number there's. There's a, a, a whole body out there that wonders, is this the end of the human race? I.e., is this like the KT event, which was an enormous meteor the size of the state of California or the size of Vancouver Island that hit, and within 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours, the reptilian age was basically over. And, and uh, or is Fukushima just a blip and all the, and our current state of radiate, uh, the global radiation event, is this just a blip that really will have no significant impact on the evolutionary future of Homo sapiens? What is your feeling? What is your judgment? Alfred, trillions of dollars has been spent on this scheme, on this hijink. And I don't think they're doing it uh, just to have a little blip. 
This is a very, very strategically planned, very carefully planned, and a plan that has been on their agenda for hundreds of years. Um, they have wanted to depopulate uh, targeted uh, populations uh, since the uh, 14 or 1500s, that that's recorded. That's actually actually in in print in a book. Um, and then, of course, Bertrand Russell was talking about it. Um, Cecil Rhodes, Sir Cecil Rhodes, who discovered a lot of Africa and wanted to build a railroad there. Uh, and of course, he left uh, funding to set up the Rhodes Scholarships, which are very famous now. Um, there, this idea has been, this notion has been uh, for a long time, but it all came from England uh, or, or the, the Eastern European region. Um, they simply, um, they want everything. The, the whole reason that sovereignty is supported now, and they've, 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 um, done a, a facelift on all of the royal families in Europe and had the, the crown princes marry commoners and they've modernized sovereignty. But the reason is because when they have sovereign leaders uh, like Queen Elizabeth, like the sultans, the, the Gulf state uh, uh, sultans who control a lot of the oil uh, resources, um, they, with the sovereignty, comes ownership of all the people, the citizens, and the land, and, and everything. They're absolute rulers. And that is maintained by the international financiers because then they can manage the sovereigns, loan money, get them in debt to the bankers, squeeze them, um, uh, practice racketeering and extortion. And the, it's the bankers and, and financial interests behind mining and controlling all of agriculture and, and um, uh, the banking, of course, controlling money that gives them um, huge profits. And they don't have to share them with anyone. So that's what's driving this whole crazy scheme. Right, so it's it's a it's it's sort of a short-sighted profit motive, but what about the larger evolutionary outcomes? I mean, is is it, is the is Homo sapiens going to survive? Well, um, why don't we ask Voltaire? Voltaire in the 1700s predicted this would happen. And he predicted who the people were who would be involved in carrying this out. And he said, it's the international Jews who are the financiers and control the banking globally. But they're not really Jews. They're false Jews. They're Satanists. And there are many um, Christians involved. There are Buddhists and, and every religion is involved. The religion is is not what it's about. It's about motives and um, beliefs and, and value systems. Now, when you and I talk about God, we think that, um, and Kevin and Nat, that it involves the church and, and doing proper things for the citizens and uh, bringing peace and harmony to the planet because that brings prosperity and creates wealth. But God, to these people like Cheney and Bush and George Herbert Walker Bush and um, these people who are the step and fetch it's the the go for boys for the international financiers that includes the Wall Street guys are uh, working for the city of London also but they believe that God is gold oil and drugs and drugs. Yes, so we can be talking to them and they can be talking to us and we can be using the same words, but the meaning, the semantics are quite different. Right. But I mean, are, are, 
one one uh, uh, are are we going to come out of this with a significantly reduced human population? Do do you think? Well, what's going to happen now? All we have to do is is look at the results of bomb testing on what happened to the United States. Uh, the bomb testing years until the 1963 partial test ban treaty. Over 1,300 nuclear bomb tests were done in Nevada, and uh, that's the biggest nuclear war in the history of the world. They ruined America. The SAT scores for the entire United States declined 12% from a high, a peak level, because of healthier population and, and prenatal care in 1945 to uh, a 12% decline by 1963, which was the, uh, the peak of atmospheric testing. The U.S. did uh, 250 nuclear bomb tests in Nevada in one year. Um, it takes three years to set up one test, but they wanted to do it because they knew the partial test ban treaty would end their bomb testing. Now, why were they doing so many bomb tests? I've asked myself that for 20 years. And I finally found a Naval Research Laboratory series of press releases. And the Navy publicly admitted and illustrated in their newsletter, in these press releases, with drawings that showed the space shuttle was used to, um, to dump large amounts of radiation into the ionosphere, which is way, way, way high in the atmosphere, uh, so they couldn't get up there anyway except by, uh, using their bombs up into the, uh, the atmosphere, high atmosphere, into the Earth's magnetic field, the Van Allen belts, or by sending the space shuttle up there and releasing the radiation through the exhaust manifold of the space shuttle. That's what the space shuttle and space station program were really all about, because that came about after atmospheric testing ended. Now, uh, what is going to happen? What is going to happen is what we know from bomb testing, nuclear power plants, um, the many the depleted uranium exposures, the mini nuke exposures. Since the early 2000s, the U.S. military has been using mini nukes, five kilotons and under, on and off the battlefield, uh, including uh, shooting them into, launching them into um, civilian areas, civilian populations like Fallujah and uh, Tikrit and all the all the the big cities in in Iraq, Afghanistan, all over Lebanon, all over Gaza, and of course, uh, all that radioactive dust is blowing directly into Israel, and it's the Israeli leadership who is nuking their own people. It's deliberate, and for that reason, because they're doing that. Israel has the fastest decline in fertility in men. In other words, the quality and the sperm count is um, declining rapidly, exponentially in Israel, and they're sterilizing their own population. In terms of Fukushima and what is going to happen now, the U.S. will continuously be exposed to daily doses for the next 100,000 years. North America is finished. Now, are there any counter technologies that you know of that are effective? Uh, well, what we do know uh, from secret Navy meetings in Huntsville, Alabama is that um, the plan to develop AIDS, uh, which was funded by Congress, and it's, it's the story is in a book by um, William um, Behold a Pale Horse. Uh, what's his name? Um, William Cooper. 
He was in naval intelligence. He went to those meetings, and we, when he got out of the Navy, he wrote that book uh, exposing uh, the depopulation agenda, the development of AIDS, uh, deliberately spraying phosphate fertilizers on all the tobacco fields in the United States. Uh, and phosphate fertilizers are mined for uranium. It's a uranium ore. And 85% of the uranium remains in the tailings from the mining of phosphate. They can only extract 15% of the uranium metal from the ore. And, um, and that's caused an epidemic of lung cancer, not just in the U.S., but any other country where they're smoking American cigarettes, the same thing is happening. So these are layer upon layer upon layer. Now they're putting vaccines in, um, and live viruses into chemtrails. They're spraying those all over Australia, New Zealand, and Tasmania, and the U.S. Everybody's sick in the Bay Area right now because we've had a week of really, really cold weather and uh, chemtrails, and, and um, they've got viruses in them. They're giving people uh, winter illnesses. They make more money. And who owns CVS pharmacies? All of a sudden, Long's Pharmacies, Rite Aid, all these uh, uh, drugstore chains just kind of changed their names that got bought out maybe five years ago. And CVS Pharmacy bought a lot of the Long's drugstores. Well, Chase Bank, J.P. Morgan, owns CVS. So it's the banks that have bought all our pharmaceutical uh, chains. And also they took a lot of the good medicines like iodine ointment and um, povidone uh, surgical scrub, iodine scrub, things that are essential to uh, control um, infections in, for instance, diabetics. One of the major causes, the major cause of diabetes since before World War II has been ionizing radiation. It started with Hiroshima and Nagasaki and um, there was almost no diabetes before that because diabetics didn't live. They couldn't survive. They die in their childhood. So, so what you're saying is that the United States popu population is targeted right now and it's targeted for extinction basically. It's targeted for extinction. For the last two years, I've noticed Chinese. These are Chinese from mainland China. These are uneducated Chinese. These are the brown shirts coming from China, and they are gang stalking in all the streets. Um, they are moving in and buying property, expensive property. They are moving in and taking over the city of Berkeley and the university along with the Israelis and, and um, other interests for the bankers. And uh, there is really a very serious, very major, very disastrous transformation going on for the whole uh, Western economy countries. But... Uh, California, in particular in the United States, uh, more than any other country, is being targeted for liquidation. Could you uh, talk more about the use of gang stalkers, the control courts, the police, and the takeover of real estate in the California area? Well, gang stalking is a phenomenon that was developed um, in the in the Catholic Church um, to for for it's a method of, of social and political control of the the um, the citizens or the people uh, who need to be controlled by the leaders, the leadership. Uh, but I'm sure it's much older than that. I'm sure they do it in. Um, indigenous societies too, more more than likely. But gang stalking is at least over a thousand years old and it is used extensively in kindergarten to twelfth grade. 
it's very vicious in the um, education mafia is what I call it. But it's not just limited to kindergarten to 12th grade. It's rampant. It's on testosterone at high speed in the universities. That's the real place where the training ground is going on. I live in Berkeley. I've lived here for a number of years, and I see it every single day. It's so ugly, and it's coming with that bad odor of the new world odor. Uh, is coming directly off that Berkeley campus. Um, in fact, all the universities, the churches, um, the law enforcement, uh, the military, it's all gang stalking now. Now, how do you see the, the interplay between the radiation genocide and this New World Order takeover? Well, um, the transformation that's going on now is uh, the international financiers are dumping the Western economy. Um, the, the U.S. is a little over 235 years old. Um, the harp was turned on by the Soviets on July 4th, 1976, which was the 200th anniversary of the United States as an independent country. So that was a harbinger and, and foreshadowing right there. Um, and of course, Fukushima was caused by harp, triggered by it from Tromso, Norway, harp facility. So the uh, takedown of the U.S., of the Western economies, absolutely uh, could not have been carried out without the HARP Global Weapon of Mass Destruction System. And the convenient depopulation agent is radiation. So they're going to use HARP to cause things that look like natural disasters in order to release huge amounts of radiation and everybody thinks it's a natural disaster. Well, it's not. It's the intelligence uh, agencies that are all working on the same page together with organized crime go globally. And the ruling elite always stand on two legs. One leg is the military, the other leg is organized crime. So here we see the takedown, the liquidation of the Western economy so that the international financiers can pump China and the Southern Hemisphere, uh, South America, the Caribbean, which is very mineral rich, and um, the um, Africa. Uh, but they're not, they're not colonizing them. Uh, because colonizing them means you have to provide an infrastructure, education, uh, things like that to the colonized people. But what they're doing is just going in and destroying the country, the people, the environment, and just absolutely raping and ruining and looting everything, but especially the natural resources. What, what do you see as, as a near-term future for the United States in this, in this uh, uh, scenario? Well, Bertrand Russell said it. Uh, he said, we're going to expect the 5% the of fertile men to breed with the 40% of fertile women that are left after our fer D, D, uh, infertility program is carried out. And any country doing this will have superior military advantage because those 40% of women who still remain fertile will be expected to uh, produce children from the age of about 20 until they're 40 and that will be cannon fodder for our wars. That's all we need them for. Right, so you you do you have a fair, fairly dark view of the future then? Well, no, I, it's not dark at all. Uh, that was Bertrand Russell's yeah. own words. Yeah. I'm but just, 
I'm just saying, though, he's part of the New World Order, and yeah. that's what he was saying in the 30s, and that's what's happening now. Yeah, yeah. Do you see any way that the New World Order plans will fail, or do you think they're going to be implemented? Well, I like what Putin said. You know, he's a gangster, too, but he's just the head of the gangsters. And he's a very smart, I actually, I respect him because um, I think he's one of the best leaders in the world today. He just, he just told him there's going to be no war in Syria and bomb his chicken anyway. So he just put his big stick down and, and passed it on to Congress because he didn't want to start a war all by himself. And Congress said, hell no, we're not going to vote for a war in, in Syria we don't know what the outcome will be. It'll end up being a World War III. And the British, for the first time in 200 years, the British Parliament voted um, no on a war with Syria. That's unheard of. It's unprecedented. Right, right. So, See, the British don't want to pay for any of the military adventures because it bankrupted them in the 1800s. They were all over the world having wars and battles all over yeah. the world, looting countries and assassinating people and uh, killing huge amounts of population. But it bankrupted England. So um, they're conveniently, um, they pumped the United States and now they're dumping the United States and they're liquidating it and using the U.S. as, and the U.S. has to pay for it. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, I've, I've heard it said, although I haven't uh, uh, seen actual do documents, that with China being the largest creditor of the U.S., that China can actually, if, 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 if the U.S. defaults on China, China debt, the US, China can actually collect on private properties in in the U.S. Is this part of a strategy? Oh, that agreement's already, it's a treaty that's already been signed, an agreement that's already been written and signed. Um, I mean, that was in the works long, long ago. It's just part of the whole liquidation setup. Uh, but yes, uh, in the last U.S. bond sale, China didn't even attend. And um, so after that, uh, Obama signed a treaty with the Chinese that that uh, if the U.S. could not pay the debt, repay the debt to China or service the debt, that the Chinese and any um, any property that's that's being foreclosed on, the Chinese can just take it. It's theirs. Well, it, no it, process, it, no court process, no nothing. Yeah. It's, it, it, it seems that then it's China would be exercising eminent domain over the U.S. Is That's that what they're saying? doing. Yes. Well, then, then there's no more U.S. So sovereignty over the U.S. if that is true. That If that is true. Now, the way to determine whether that's true or not is to see what happens in the courts. And if the federal courts and the Supreme Court uphold that or challenges to it, um, then we'll know uh, no. whether the courts are working or not. But the courts are all, that's, that's totally, uh, that's a total racket. The whole judicial system is all infiltrated, it's obfuscated, it's uh, compromised. And I was very, very shocked when I read the rules on judicial conduct for all judges in the state of California. And one of the rules is that um, they're not allowed to join organizations unless it's a military organization because that's exempt. But they were also encouraged to join youth organizations. And they, um, I mean, the language of this judicial, rules of judicial contact, conduct is very clear. It said that judges can become members of youth organizations, disadvantaged youth organizations, so that they can have intimate contact with the youths in the organization. Now that is pedophilia. 
Right, right. So that Pedophilia this, runs the courts. So, so that, but, but basically, what what you're saying is that this this uh, uh, this disintegration of the structure and sovereignty of America has been going on for a long time, principally through implementing a radiation genocide starting with nuclear testing. That's right. And um, for some unknown reason, um, I must have had too much coffee that morning, um, I was on the computer and I found this graph on world oil prices uh, since 1946. And it's put out by, by an oil industry uh, in organization, a professional organization. So I figured it would be pretty accurate, all the, the oil patches reading that. So I, um, I printed it out, and I sat there looking at it, and uh, the oil prices were real low and in- real even until the Iraq run. Wolf War plus dollars, <laughs> or or any other way you want to arrange that equation. Those three entities are the Western economy. And what I notice is that uh, when I put the Vietnam War, the Iraq Iran War, the 1973 oil crisis, um, the Israeli attack uh, in the Negev on the on the Egyptians, um, the uh, the NATO attack on Yugoslavia, the Iraq War, Afghan War, Gaza, all these wars, 9-11, all these false flags, Chernobyl, all of them, I put them all on this graph. And guess what, Alfred? Mm. Every time the value of the dollar started going down, oil prices would go, and there would be a false flag or another war, and it would drive, drive the dollar up again. So they're using these wars, uh, fake wars, I call it global nuclear kabuki theater, uh, because every single one of those events, except the Iraq-Iran war, I haven't found the evidence yet, and, and, and the Vietnam war, uh, all of those events involved nuclear materials no matter what country they were in. It's global depopulation and they're carrying out global depopulation with nuclear um, pollution. So uh, some people have said that they no longer have the capacity to start wars uh, as the Syria case showed. Uh, no, the U.S. no longer. Yeah, the, the U.S. Oh, oh, so we, we might have a China uh, in Wait a minute. War. Who has the two veto powers on the UN Security Council? It's China and Russia. Yeah. This was always planned to be the army for the new world order. They just had to build the country up and then harvest it. We're just a, a fat hog that they're slaughtering now. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we're we're now going gone well into almost uh, 75 min- minutes for this for this uh, s- s- segment and we can cover the foreshadowing of Fukushima and I think ha- how this whole radiation genocide and the targeting of the United States and of the world in a subsequent interview because I think that it merits its own interview. 
I think so too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do you want to leave our viewers with any final thoughts? Uh, per perhaps, how can how can our viewers protect themselves? I mean, with with this increasing increasing radiation, I know that I spend a great deal of my personal time uh, and energy. Uh, uh, protecting myself through my diet, uh, through surrounding myself with far infrared. Uh, what sort of re recommendations would, would you have? Well, one thing I'd like to recommend is the Biomat that um, I think you have a website to recommend. Yeah. And uh, that has been just essential for me and friends of mine to have that and be able to use it. That's far infrared. You lay on it, and or you could put it in a chair, and um, that that infrared goes into your body and is very very healing. It's excellent. Um, that's one of the really important tools that I use. Uh, the Yumi Kikuchi and Gen Morita. You and I have stayed with them in Japan and know them very well. They're Japanese activists. They live in Hawaii now because they had to get their children, small children, out of Japan after Fukushima. But they told me, one of the doctors they know in Fukushima Prefecture uh, told them that he uh, made his family members and everyone who works for him and any friends he could convince to go on the macrobiotic diet which was developed for the Hiroshima and Nagasaki survivors and it kept them alive and, and healthy. And it is simply brown rice, miso soup, you can buy miso paste, it's a soybean fermented paste at the grocery store or um, in Asian market. Do not buy any food products from Japan at all. Um, there are some uh, soybean uh, miso paste made in the U.S. and probably in other countries. Um, then uh, you want to also eat Japanese pickle. The Japanese pickle, cabbage, beets, turnips, um, Napa cabbage, all kinds of food products, vegetables. They pickle or vinegar and because they have um, there are friendly bacteria that live on the skin of those vegetables. Uh, they ferment once they're in the salt or in the um, in the vinegar, or they have a fermenting period, and then you um, you can them or eat them before they start to spoil. And that uh, fermentation process. Uh, improves the nutritional value of the vegetables and then you can eat them in the winter too when your garden isn't isn't producing but that combination of brown rice miso soup um, and the um, uh, the Japanese pickle as well as zume bashi which is a salty plum paste with a leaf special leaf from a tree in it those four things will keep you alive and healthy and by the way, it tastes really delicious. It's very simple food, but it's very nutritional, very easy to make. And there are X on making Japanese pickle that are in English. There are also places on the internet where you can download recipes. And I will be putting them on my website when the website is uh, operational. Uh, we're building it right now, but it should be ready really soon. And people should eat root vegetables. The radiation penetrates generally about two centimeters. That's the upper dust level on the, the soil surface. And uh, if you're eating root vegetables that grow down below that, that dust level, of about two centimeters, you're eating uh, food with much lower radiation uh, levels in it and also 
the root vegetables are extremely nutritious. So, for instance, a mother with a baby can boil root vegetables, highly colored vegetables, um, yams, uh, sweet potatoes, turnips, carrots, anything with a lot of color because it has very antioxidants that counteract radiation. Um, and and then you just put that in a blender after you've cooked it and it's cooled, you know, just so it's soft. And um, I used to pour it in ice cube trays and freeze it, and I used that as baby food for my daughter. Nothing, no preservatives in it. If I grew them in my garden, then it was even better nutrition because I knew the dirt was clean too. And um, it's really important to avoid dairy products and to drink filtered drinking water. People should get an uh, osmo uh, reverse osmosis filter on their drinking water. And we've uh, collected baby teeth, 6,000 baby teeth from children living around nuclear power plants in the U.S., Japan, and, and Britain. And the um, we used uh, reverse osmosis filters um, in those areas where the nuclear power plants were, and it lowered the radiation levels dramatically in, in the untreated drinking water. So, um, the doctor told Yumi Kikuchi and Gen Morita that all of his family and the people he had recommended this diet to were very healthy. They survived Fukushima. They're still living there. Um, but that the Japanese who are there living on Western diets, all of them got sick. All of them got radiation-related illnesses, cancer, diabetes. Their hair fell out. They had bleeding gums. Their, their, their uh, teeth fell out. Um, it's, uh, it's just so serious now. People have to have reverse osmosis when the radiation levels everybody needs a Geiger counter I want to recommend the Gamma Scout Geiger counter which is um, a German Geiger counter that's the best one that I know of um, here it is just a great just a great Geiger counter you can measure Sieverts Becquerels you could program it to take at whatever interval you want and then right here is a little door you open it you put your um, cable into it and this has a computer in it you can save like six months of data uh, and you download it into your computer it comes with a software program and that uh, crunches the data and gives you the the data sheets which are court admissible uh, people don't make mistakes with Geiger counters measuring radiation. It's uh, the Geiger counter measures the radiation and records it. So uh, it's it's getting harder and harder now. Some of the airlines are um, banning Geiger counters or air monitors on airplanes. Uh, this is making officials very, very nervous. I want to just bring up one thing and caution people. Political ponerology is something that people should be reading in order to understand this. And this is a book written by um, a, a group of uh, who wrote it during the Soviet era in Poland. Um, the They had to burn it. They got a notice that the uh, the secret police were coming to um, take all the books away. They threw it in the fireplace and burned it. And they moved to Russia, the Soviet Union, where they rewrote it. The same thing happened. They had to burn it. And one of them survived and came to the United States. He rewrote it in his 80s for the third time. And I'll bet you every copy, every every. Uh, new revised edition was better than the last and uh, it was Brzezinski who banned it from being published in the United States in the 90s but this poor man in his 90s finally got it published in the US and that was uh, recently 
Uh, so it's called political ponerology. It's the study of evil in politicians. Ponerology is evil. You can also study just plain evil in certain groups. But this is about the, the politicians who are um, all caught up in this, this evil crime, and they're the ones making it happen. Hmm? Politics. Yes, it's the politics. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, you, you brought up the, the, um, the issue of the airlines and Geyer counters. And yes. so perhaps one future program that we'll do is the safety of, of, of air travel and what sort of readings those who manage to get Geiger counters on airliners get. Right. And, um, uh, because I think that that would be a great public service. That would be a great public service. And people should be talking to each other. They should be sharing information. Do not trust any authorities. I don't care who they are. You have to, people have to start using uh, critical thinking and reading between the lines and understanding that nobody's protecting. We have to protect ourselves and each other. And it starts by protecting yourself so that you can protect your family members so that you can tell your neighbors and they can protect their family members. And what's happening now, because of this huge tsunami debris field the size of Texas that is washing up in Hawaii now, and it's going to be here in another year, it's already starting to land on our shores, and it's very radioactive. It gets more concentrated in seawater on the debris that's floating across the ocean than, uh, be than uh, when it started out, when it left Japan covered with radiation. So it's, um, it's uh, there's no way to get away from it. There's no way to hide from it. There's nowhere to go to uh, protect yourself. We have to start doing our own research, uh, critical things thinking people who've been through the anti-nuclear movement in the, the 50s, 60s, 70s are invaluable because they know all this stuff already. There are so many young people and young mothers and uh, I feel terrible about them and I, I went Christmas shopping last, last Christmas which was a year and a half after, Cherno after um, Fukushima and I could not believe all the babies with with uh, very obvious birth defects of the eyes, uh, Down syndrome, dwarfs, toddlers that are two years old and they're this tall. They'll never be taller. So um, uh, it's there's no choice. We have to do our own research. Thank God we have the internet. We have libraries still. They're going to take those away from us too. Um, and uh, we just have to come together and, and start being really real and really basic um, because there's no path through this except good conduct, right conduct. You have to be honest. You have to be spiritually clean. You have to be conservative with your resources. Manage your resources. Be very careful with them. Don't buy need. Don't buy food that's not good for you. Um, just go really, really simple. There are many food streams in America. In other words, the poor people go to pack and save and these big, huge, uh, high volume uh, grocery stores that, that have all the poison GMO food in them. Whole foods get, they get a lot of their food from southern, the southern hemisphere. That is the best place to buy groceries now in the United States because it's food that comes from regions that have the lowest contamination now. Well, um, on that note <laughs> of practicality and... Uh, um, uh, get I, grounded. Yeah, get, ground get, get, get grounded, I think, is, is, is the right note as we enter 2014. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us with this update. And 
we look forward uh, to future updates, Loren, as events develop. Thank you so much, Alfred. You've been um, highly influential in helping and supporting me to get my information out. Um, you have had so many compliments from people on your interviewing style and the excellent questions that you ask and your, your perception of deeper meanings and so forth. And I really want to thank you for your professionalism and your excellence in, in being prepared and carrying out a very professional interview. This is what people need. They need the truth. Remember what John Lennon sang, give me some truth. Give me the <laughs> truth. <laughs> That's for sure. And, you know, he died for us. He I started know. singing about, uh, oh, war is taking all our money, and we don't need all that war in Vietnam. Yeah. And he started messing with other people's money, and they killed him. Yes, yes, indeed. And of all the ironic things, oh, Carolyn Kennedy Yes. Pointed recently as ambassador to Japan. She went there and presented her papers to the emperor, her official amb ambassadorial papers. Uh, it was right on the assassination of her father. Carolyn Kennedy was sent by Obama, and remember, he wrote in his autobiography, I hate white people. He wrote that in his autobiography. And he has sent Carolyn Kennedy to Japan to be assassinated by the Fukushima radiation. She will come back sick, and then she will die. And that is the last living direct relative of JFK's immediate family. And remember that he died for us, too. Wow. What a sobering thought. Well, uh, thank you. That's that's a lot to really ponder. Yes. And uh, until our next interview. Alfred, it's just a whole lot more fun than going shopping. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather go to the library. <laughs> yes, yes. It's a lot more interesting. <laughs> I agree, I agree. You can take the books back any time, no arguing. <laughs> Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.